Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, <coughs> proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Will you please pray with me? Loving and gracious God, help us to hear these words as being spoken to us. And help us to understand the meaning that you would have them give for us today. May the meditations of all our hearts and the words of my mouth be pleasing and acceptable to you. O oh God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Are you ready for Christmas? No. Are you really ready for Christmas? No. Oh, all right. Well, that's the question that John the Baptist asked us this morning. Are you ready to receive and welcome the long-awaited Messiah into your life? And John electrifies the crowd with his preaching, with his urgency, his energy, his truth, and yes, even his anger. It tantalizes their apathy. And the text tells us that lots of people come to hear him. Mark says everybody from the countryside and from Jerusalem came out to see him. They intentionally come and they subject themselves. If you ever read John the Baptist preaching, you know what I mean by this kind of verbal road rage as he gives them the word. They open their lives to be judged and scared and harassed and to be driven right off the comfortable, boring highways of their lives. Now why? Why do they come? Because maybe, just maybe, in the midst of rebuke, they will repent. Maybe they will be reborn. Maybe they will remember. Remember who God is and remember who they are. And maybe, just maybe, John's blunt blast will become a bold blessing. And John's message is a simple one. Turn away from your sins and be baptized and God will forgive your sins. The Messiah is coming and will soon arrive. There isn't much time left. The people have to prepare for the coming of Jesus. Jesus will soon be on the scene. And John quotes from the prophet Isaiah, Get the road ready for the Lord. Make a straight path for him to travel. And to do this involves a lot of work and a lot of preparation. We've all seen highway construction and road construction, right? Over where I live, the Houghton Road has been torn up for months as they are improving it. Put that in. When it's done, it will be nice, though. But see, there's a lot of work involved. Every valley must be filled up, every hill and mountain leveled off. So John is quoting Isaiah, who first spoke these words to a hopeless people, the people of Israel who had shriveled up 
in the catastrophic captivity of Babylonia. And yet, Isaiah reminds these homeless exiles that God has not abandoned them. That indeed, God is preparing right now a way to return to Israel, to return to life, to return to God, to return home. In echoing Isaiah's words this morning, John is speaking to the faithful remnant who have returned to the land but have not returned to the vision. He is saying to them, and he is saying to us, that God is building a new highway, a new path, a new way right here in our wilderness, preparing for us a straight path amid the crooked and the confused ways of this world. In the New Testament, the word for road and the word for way is the same. And of course we know, for those of us who call ourselves Christians, the way, the truth, and the life is Jesus. And what a way it is. A journey straight through and with and in Christ. This Jesus is the mighty one who topples the proud and the powerful. But he is also the gentle one who cradles his lambs and tenderly carries us home. This Jesus is the angry prophet who turns over tables of greed. But he is also the Savior who unconditionally forgives the prodigal son and the prostitute daughter. This Jesus is a demanding teacher who confronts us with our hatreds and our prejudices and our selfishness. But he is also the healer who casts out our demons and opens our blind hearts and feeds us with the very bread of life. Yes, Jesus is the way, the straight and promising path through the treacheries and the disappointments of this world. And he reminds us that daily repentance and daily renewal and daily commitment is what the journey of faith is all about. Now this Christmas season, as most of us experience, as we experience it, seems almost designed to distract us from a God-centered living. There's so much pressure to shout, 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 rush, 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 spend, spend, spend. And for what? How many of us even remember what presents we got for Christmas last year? But the gift of the gifts of Christmas are temporary. The message of Christmas is eternal. The Almighty God came to earth in the form of a man. Christ lived among us and shared our suffering and shared our pain. And he died a horrible death in order to save us from our sins. He opened up the way to eternal life. And someday he will come again and establish his perfect and eternal kingdom here on earth. And until that day, our job is to share the love of Jesus Christ with everyone we know. So, question for you. Whose life will be transformed because you share with them the love of Christ in this Christmas season? Claim this moment for God. Let that be the true present that you give this Christmas. The present of a life lived out in service to God, and in service to others. Amen.